Hello there, my name is Tariana Rocha. I'm a psychoanalyst and a coach, and I help children of narcissists gain psychological independence from their parents and also build a life aligned with their true self. In today's video, I just want to informally comment on something that I watched in another video. Now, I was watching a self-aware diagnosed narcissist because I, I really love to follow all, all sorts of channels uh, where people who suffer from different sort of conditions talk about their experience. And I do this because it helps me understand their experience more deeply. It complements my studies and it creates empathy, empathy uh, towards whatever they're, they're going through, right? And I think the content is just incredible. Oftentimes it's the best content on, you know, um, said disorder. So in this particular case, I was watching a diagnosed narcissist and uh, this narcissist was talking about how they view self-esteem. And, and they said a couple of things that really stood out to me and I was reflecting on them and I wanted to share my thoughts with you guys. So the first thing they said was, you know, I feel shame at a physical level, like I feel it in my chest and it just keeps screaming that I have no worth, I'm, I'm useless. And I can feel this reality of how worthless I am through this intense feeling of shame. And this really caught my eye because I see this experience as something completely different. I mean, what I mean is, and I want to validate that, you know, I've, I've actually felt this type of debilitating shame when I was much younger. And it was physical, so I'm not saying that he's lying about the shame, that's, that's not what I'm talking about. And I, I, at the time, I used to feel it like fire in my chest and in my forearms. And I, I could basically hear like very punitive thoughts in my mind that were telling me how worthless I was. But this is what I actually think is generating the crappy feeling. You see, I think the first mistake here is thinking that if we feel shame and self-hate, that this is some sort of proof that we are worthless. And I don't think that's what's happening at all. What I actually think is happening is that our mind is made of different parts and we don't notice it, but these different parts act like little sub personalities and they're having this inner dialogue all day long. And we don't notice it because it's so automated, right? Many of the things that are being said have been being said since we were much younger because they're very fixed beliefs and we don't even question the reality anymore. But the fact that we don't, know that this inner dialogue is happening doesn't mean that it doesn't generate an emotional reaction. Now imagine that you had a person that was attached to you and was always calling you names and telling you you were worthless and that you were never going to amount to anything and that you know, you'd know you always been a piece of crap and that's all you would ever be. Wouldn't you feel pretty, pretty crappy? Wouldn't you think that it would get to you eventually? Of course it's going to affect how you feel. We all have this inner critic and in the case of this narcissist and in the case of many people who have other personality disorders and other issues that have got to do with, sh with shame at its core as well, um, what's happening is that you have like this person that is your inner critic that is spewing all of this nonsense at you 24 seven and it's so automated that you don't question its reality and it feels like you really are worthless. But in the, in the same way that if you had a child that was feeling a lot of shame and it had to interact with an adult that kept telling it, you're worthless, you're worthless, you're worthless, you're worthless, this child would probably start crying and feeling re really bad about themselves. You too have a part of your personality that carries the shame and another part of your personality that works as an inner critic. And there's this, these dynamics going on in the background all the time. And what you're feeling as confirmation of your worthlessness, which is the crushing shame and self-hatred, is actually the part of your psyche that's being berated, just, you know, having natural emotional reactions anyone would have to being berated all the damn time. And this other part of your psyche where you, you, you feel the self-hate is actually your inner critic that won't let up because you've prob probably internalized an introject of some sort of abusive or neglectful caretaker, right? As psychoanalysis would explain it. So what I'm trying to get at here is that what we think is some sort of objective proof of our worthlessness, which is the feeling of worthlessness, is actually just an emotional reaction a part of our psyche is having to the fact that it's being berated and criticized 24 seven by another part. And you can actually, you can actually fix this 
by focusing on how you talk to yourself internally. And I understand it's like, oh, please, I can't feel compassion towards that part of myself. This is never going to work. And, and the thing is, it does work. And as this part of you that's feeling the shame gets talked to over and over and over, um, you know, there's another part here that's wise and loving and patient and resilient and super understanding. And they won't criticize the shame. And as they have this repetitive experience in your mind of talking to each other, this child part that carries the shame starts act actually like relaxing and feeling that it's safe to feel that way because it's not going to be punished. There's a huge difference between you feeling something and then you being berated for it and you feeling something and you just getting love and compassion for it through time, through this inner dialogue between your, your own parts, you provide yourself a corrective emotional experience, much like what would happen between you and the therapist where, you know, you, you would come at them with all that insecurity and, and, and uncertainty of your worthlessness. And they would just look at you very lovingly like, uh, dude, I think you deserve respect and, and that's how I'm going to treat you. I don't care what you're saying about how you think you, you, you know, you're worthless. I'm going to treat you this way because this is what I see in you. And this will eventually convince you that you aren't worthless. So, but what's really happening is the part of you that carries the shame is finally, you know, having so much interaction with this healthy part that it's like, Oh, it's so nice to not be berated and punished 24 seven for once. I guess I can relax now. And this rela relaxation is felt a self esteem because when you think about yourself, you feel everything's fine. Everything's fine. And it's actually a res an emotional reaction. Part of your psyche is having to being treated well at its worst hour. How interesting, huh? The other thing that this self-aware narcissist said is that um, he requires comparison and, and hierarchical thinking in order to know if he has any value. So he said, how can I know that I'm good at all if I'm not better than someone else at something? I require people to tell me who I am and that I have value. And I thought, well, that's a very unstable way of building your self-esteem because you can bet your bottom dollar that someone else is always going to be better at you. And even if you're at the top of your game, it's just a matter of time before somebody else gets to the top, right? Or you're going to be living this existence where you're constantly scared of losing what you got because you're scared of what it's like to not have that uh, sort of elite status because then you won't have access to your self-esteem because you need that one condition to be satisfied. You got to be better than everyone else for you to feel good, feel good about yourself. So that's inherently unstable because, you know, you're, 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 someone's going to be better at you some way, somehow. I mean, you're going to be hyper vigilant, always trying to figure out if someone's better than you. So how is that self-esteem, right? And I think a much more stable way of creating self-esteem is to act in ways that generate a sensation of alignment. And this could be anything from making a difficult decision, um, but you know, that really feels aligned and empowering, or I don't know, maybe writing something in the uh, a book that you're trying to write, you know, and you're kind of scared because you're like, oh, can I be a writer? I'm not sure. But you sit your butt down and, and you write a little bit and this generates a feeling of alignment. That's a lot more in, within your reach and, and stable than just depending on you being better than everybody else, you know, to give yourself permission to feel good about yourself. So, for example, if I feel really crappy one day, um, I can still, let's say I get all sorts of comments from haters, you know, and I'm feeling just like really triggered and I'm like, oh, I must be a really bad person. I'm putting these videos out there. They must be crap. And I feel really bad about myself. Well, if, if my only way of feeling self-esteem is having other people tell me that I'm superior, then I'm screwed, right? But if at that moment there's something that I can do, it's totally within my power to generate a feeling of alignment, such as, you know what, what I was going to work on today was interacting with that one client and giving them, you know, what I got, the, the best that I've got and, and, and doing my daily studying so that I can always become a better professional, which is something that I'm really into and I love studying. So long as I can do those things, execute those actions that generate a feeling of alignment, then I can generate self-esteem and it doesn't depend on the comments or anything outside of me. People can think I'm shit and I'm not going to pretend that nothing affects me, but I can block it and also go do something that will generate self-esteem. And that is, you know, acting in a way that generates the feeling of alignment.
Okay, so um, I want this video to be brief. I've been making some pretty long videos lately, so I'm gonna cut it short here. I'm just gonna summarize what I said, and then I want you to tell me if this made any sense. Um, let me know in the comments if you identify with anything that I said. So the summary is, it's, very, it's a very unstable uh, way of generating self-esteem to need to be better than other people because someone else is always going to be better than you and even if you're at the top you're going to be hyper vigilant and scared all the, all the time that you're going to be knocked down and that's not really self-esteem and that's not really stable it's much better for you to always be able to act in such a way that generates a feeling of alignment and that can be attached to a number of different actions right that could generate that for you also uh, we shouldn't confuse the fact that we feel shame and self-hatred with confirmation of our worthlessness. This is just the resulting emotional reaction of a part of your psyche that gets berated all the time by your inner critic. And once this these dynamics change, right? Once this part is allowed to feel everything it feels, and, and, and this part here is, is actually not the inner critic, but a really um, respectful, loving, uh, compassionate, light, uh, wise energy, then these continuous dialogues will actually start generating a feeling of ease and this is what we can um, interpret as being self-esteem as well the actual sensation of alignment and ease that is an emotional reaction we have to the way that we treat ourselves internally Whew. okay so that's just what i wanted to tell you guys about this is what i was thinking when i was watching these videos um, let me know if if you found it interesting, if you identified with anything, ask me some questions in the comments below and see you soon. Oh, if you want to take a deep dive into how being raised by narcissistic parents is keeping you psychologically enslaved, then click on the Inner Mastery Lab in the description of this video and I will walk you through how to gain psychological independence and courage. Okay, bye-bye.